like this in class. So he taught my thermodynamics class, so we called him Thermodynamo, and we wrote a comic book series about him. It's pretty awesome. Uh, yeah. There's a reason why I didn't get straight A's in college. <laughs> uh, no, I had the most amazing comic book series, too. Problem is, I didn't like my chemistry professor, so he was the bad guy. My chemistry professor was like, he was the best bad guy. Because he wore these, these baby blue suits. He was the only man I've ever known who could, who could get away with wearing these just pastel colored suits. I was always so jealous. Um, dang it, I am putting this on YouTube. Dang it. Um, I should have not hit the record button. But now I have to finish the story. So. So he was always the guy who just would walk in and he would tell us every day, we had a combined chem one and two section, and he would always tell us, oh, this class is too hard. They, the university is forcing me to teach this. We shouldn't be required to teach this. This is dumb. Uh, there's no reason why we're having this class. It's too hard for you. You're all dumb. Uh, this was the same professor who gave us a three hour final, who at the end of the three hour final, no one was done with the final. And I'm a fast test taker. I got two thirds of the way through. <laughs> it was awful. No, he ended up scaling up the grades a lot. Got a B plus in that class, and I, I thought my life was over. Um, but he, uh, he was just such a, I mean, if he would have not treated the class like it was impossible to learn the material, uh, I think the class would have been a lot better. But he was trying to drive students out of that class. So I made him the villain in my comic book series. <laughs> it's fitting. The guy I had for physics too was a little different. His name was Alexei Groverman. And I think, uh, I think he was Polish. He had a very strong accent, he was a great guy. Um, I always drew him with giant hair because his last name was Groverman. Was, he had an afro. He didn't in real life, but he should have. And then Thermodynamo. Who he would start every class with, okay, and uh, let's uh, get us started now. Uh, every single class. I always thought when I became a professor, I was going to get a, an awesome catchphrase. I think my awesome catchphrase is, okay, uh, let's do this. Because I do that every day. All right, let's talk about real class stuff now. That is five minutes of wasted life on YouTube when you guys got to watch this again. <laughs> uh, I hope not. I am so sorry. Although I'm not really all that sorry, Dr. Eckhart. You kind of deserve that one. Although if you have any of those baby blue suits, I will take them. Please. I want those. I should. I should. I have, a, I have an awesome green suit. I might have to wear it on Tuesday. I have a green suit. It's like forest green. I got it at a Goodwill when I was in high school. Did you get so fit in a suit from high school? Okay, the pants were about six sizes too big for me in high school, but now they fit. I had to wear a giant belt, and the thing was just like, poof, down, down. <laughs> Also, the thing on me at this point, my arms have grown since high school, so I have like, it's, it's Chris Farley, fat guy in a little coat, all over again. Um, I'll blame it on my arms. Yeah, actually, one of the shirts that I took my, uh, my high school senior pictures in, I still wear every once in a while, here. I cannot wear the same pants though. But I can wear the same shirts. All right. Um, okay. Let's talk about the difference between these two circuits. Is there a difference? There's a big difference. 
Anybody know what the big difference is? Why does that pose a big difference? Well, they do do two different things. Let's look at it, okay? Here, IC is equal to C DVC DT, right? That's, that's the relationship. That's true for both of them. Does the voltage across this change? No. It remains constant, which means IC is equal to zero for after it reaches steady state, okay, after it charges. Is the voltage across this constant? No, Dylan says no. Why? Is this zero? It's not, <laughs> which, means, which means we have, let's say maybe two, or even 0 0.2, or even 0 0.02, okay? Is equal to C times dVc dt. This cannot be zero if you have a current source. That's a problem. If you leave that plugged in for too long of a time, eventually that voltage is gonna get ridiculous. Okay? This is unreasonable. In this type of system, with no resistances, this system is unstable. This system is stable. Why is this one unstable? Why do I call this one unstable and this one stable? Okay, when it, with a, the term stable, uh, when it comes to physics, means that it has a steady state solution. Anybody know what steady state means? It's, right, or if it is change, it's, it's a continuous wave form or something where, where it's predictable, sine wave, cosine wave, okay? Here, you reach steady state immediately, okay? If you're looking at VC, you reach that voltage immediately as soon as it's charged. You look at IC, you reach steady state immediately. It jumps up to infinity, then jumps back down to zero, and is at steady state. These are constant values. Over here, if you plot VC and IC, IC is constant, right? Because it's a constant current source. Voltage is linearly increasing forever, which means it never reaches a steady state value you come back tomorrow after having this plugged in, your voltage is at three billion, okay? Um, it's not, it's, it's unstable. The longer you have it plugged in, uh, the more that this system begins to defy the laws of physics. You can't have three billion volts in the atmosphere. The dielectric breaks down. When you reach above something like 50,000 volts, the dielectric begins breaking down. That is where you see the arcing currents. It can't handle that much voltage. Which means this system, which, what's gonna happen is eventually you're going to lose charges off of your capacitor because they are actually going to spark to ground. That's one outcome. The second outcome is this friggin' light's on fire. Okay, third outcome, dielectric here breaks down and you have current that travels through your capacitor. Which destroys the capacitor. It's not quite lighting on fire, um, but it's, it's a worthless capacitor at this point. It turns into a resistor. Okay, so there is a dramatically different our relationship here. When we get into inductances, 
this relationship is flipped. An inductor cannot handle being plugged into a voltage source. It can handle being plugged into a current source. It's the exact opposite. Uh, inductances and capacitances are effectively opposites, which is weird because we were talking about the series in parallel for the capacitance relationship and how it's different from resistances. Um, well, it turns out that's, that's also different from capacitance to inductance and it's just weird. We see the same relationships all over in this class. Everything is just the same. It's kind of cool. Kind of not cool. Makes the equations easy to memorize, except for apparently that one energy equation that I should have known. Okay, uh, let's let's do uh, let's do an example before we go. Um, let's go back to the example that I gave you uh, earlier in class. Let's see if I can draw it correctly again. Okay. So here we have a voltage source. Again, we're doing voltage source. Okay, node one, node two, node three, node four, node five. We'll go ahead and ground this one just for funsies to say that nodal voltage is going to be zero. Okay, we have Vs, C1, C2, C3, C4, C5. Just for the sake of fun, we'll set them all equal to each other. And we'll say that they're equal to 1.5 microfarads. Not Coulomb. Okay, for the sake of fun, Vs is going to be equal to 24 volts. Okay, the question is fill out the node voltage table. Okay, so here you got your nodes, here you got your voltage. I know, shocking, right? One, two, three, four, five. Five nodes. Five, five beautiful nodes. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, 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 oh. Again, that was funnier in my head. Dang it. I would have killed it in a Sesame Street crowd. Like five-year-olds nailed it. They'd be on the floor dead, laughing. <laughs> <sighs> that one was not supposed to be funny. Um, okay. Do we know any of these node voltages right now? Yes, which ones do we know? Five and one. What is five? That one's the easy one. We actually drew a ground sign next to it. What is one? 24. That is the weirdest four I think I've ever drawn. I am often accused of having my fours look like nines, and having my nines look like fours. That is very clearly a four. My fours do look like nines. It's a fair, fair statement. Okay. Except for that one. I don't know what I did there. All right. So to solve this, what would you recommend that we do? What did we do for a system of resistances? We found the equivalent resistance because that allows us to understand how the system is working. So we're going to go ahead and do that. 
which equivalent are we going to take first? Which capacitors are we going to combine? Huh? Any suggestions? Any ideas? Bueller? Bueller? Do we have any that are in series? Do we have any that are in parallel? Well, are these in series or in parallel? Why would they be in series? Right, so the output of this one is the input to the next one. That is series, yes. So here, two and four are in series. That's, if you were to ask me, that one's the obvious one to start with. So good job. Okay, so we'll take C2, C4, plug it in here. So the equation for them in series is 1 over C2 plus 1 over C4, which is equal to, well, they're all 1.5 microfarads. So this becomes 1 over 1 over 1.5 times 10 to the negative sixth plus 1 over 1.5 times 10 to the negative sixth. That's gross. I'm just going to do the math for you. It's 0 0.75 times 10 to the negative sixth, which is equal to 0 0.75 microfarads. Okay, and that's CEQ1. So if we were to draw CEQ1, now that we have combined those two, we're gonna get rid of node three as we do so, and just have one capacitor there. And this one capacitor is C2 and C4. We keep C3, so here's C1, here's C3, CEQ1, and C5. All right, do we have, what, what, what is our next step? Now we have two in parallel, these two. How do we know they're in parallel? Well, if we draw the nodes, one, five, four, and two. Both of these capacitors have inputs at node two and outputs at node four, which makes them in parallel. Okay, so we can now combine them. So C3 and CEQ1 will make CEQ2 is equal to, for parallel, Capacitances add C3 plus CEQ1, which is equal to 1.5 microfarads plus 0 0.75 microfarads, which is equal to 2.25 microfarads. Okay, we can now draw this as another equivalent system. That's node one, it's node two, that's node four, it's node five, this is C1, this is CEQ2, and this is C5. There's our VS. Now what do we do? Now they're in series. Now all of them are in series, so we'll figure out how much charge gets transferred to C1 because that's how much charge goes into CEQ2, because that's how much charge goes into C5. They all have the same current flowing through them. They're all gonna have the same charge transfer. So CEQ3 is equal to one divided by one over C1 plus one over C5 plus one over CEQ2. I cannot do the head maths here. as much as I wish.
Okay, the answer that I get is 0 0.5625 microfarads. Feel free to check my math. But I am not judging you based on how well you can use a calculator. At least not yet. We will get that time. Okay, 0 0.5625 microfarads, which means if we draw the equivalent system, it looks like this. Where this is CEQ3 is equal to 0 0.5625 microfarads. This is a VS. Our next step is we want to know how much charges left the source. So here, Q, C, E, Q, 3 is equal to C, C, E, Q, nope, C, sorry, I keep liking C, E, Q, 3 times V, C, E, Q, 3. What is V, C, E, Q, 3? How much voltage is across that capacitor? Sorry, I see myself on camera and I have to do stupid things. Shouldn't be posting this to YouTube, but whatever. Do we know what VCEQ3 is? Do you know how much voltage is across that capacitor? It's 24. Why? Because if we do KVL in this loop, there's, there's only one. So, this is equal to 0 0.5625 times 24. That's microfarads. That's, do not have my calculator. Phone app. This is equal to 13.5 microcoulombs. Okay, so 13 point, I might have erased part of the board with my back. 13.5 microcoulombs of charge left the battery. Awesome. Okay? That means we know, going back to this system, 13.5 microcoulombs of charge entered capacitor 1. Which means Q, C1, equals C1 times VC1. We know what C1 is. We know what QC1 is. We know two of them. We can now figure out what VC1 is. VC1 is equal to QC1 divided by C1, which is equal to 13.5 microcoulombs divided by 1.5 microfarad. which is equal to nine, which comes out a lot evenly, more evenly than I thought it was going to. That's uncomfortable. Nine volts. Okay, so there are nine volts across C1. How can we use that information? Is nine two? Is that the answer to two? Why do you say no? You said that very, uh, very quickly. What, do we, what, what relationship do we have between the nodal voltages and the component voltages here? Huh? Nobody wants to answer questions. 
Get all excited. Okay, fine, I'll give you the answer. Uh, Caden, you still haven't answered the question I asked you earlier. <laughs> I mean, you weren't here for it, but that's a different. <laughs> I, was, I was actually gonna wait for you to show up in class and then just stare at you and be like, well, we're waiting. But yeah, that didn't happen. Um, problem is I got sidetracked because it would've been a really funny joke. Okay, the, the relationship between our nodal voltages is we know the voltage across this component is equal to the difference in voltages between these two nodes. It doesn't matter what the difference in voltage is between one and five. It only matters the difference in, vol in voltage between the two nodes that the capacitor is connected to. That's all it cares about. So little v1 minus little v2 is equal to big vc1. The nodal voltage difference is the voltage across the capacitor. And this is true for every component that is connected between one and two. Every single component has this relationship. Okay, we know what VC1 is. What is it? It's nine, right? Do we know what little v1 is? It's 24. So here, we know this one, we know this one, we can solve for V2, which gets plugged in over here, okay? V2 equals V1, little v1, minus big VC1, which is equal to 24 minus nine. That's head maths there, boys. And girl, sorry. It's 15. Okay, right? I'm suddenly questioning my ability to do math. Okay, I'm also gonna step back through here and do something very simple. C5 has the same capacitance as C1, which means this math to, to solve for VC1 is identical. We're gonna get nine volts across v, uh, C5 too, okay? because all of the components are the same. We have the same current flowing through C5, which is 13.5 microcoulombs. We have the same uh, capacitance, which is 1.5 microfarads. We're gonna get nine volts, which means we know VC5 is equal to nine volts. Which two nodes does C5 span? four and five. So that means it goes from four to five. So it's little v4 minus little v5. Do we know either v5 or v4? Which one do we know? Five. We know five, which means we can solve for v4. v4 is equal to little v5 plus vc5, which is equal to what is little v5? It's equal to zero plus nine, which means that little v4 is equal to Nine volts, okay? Which means we can just plug that directly into the table. Awesome. Okay, to do the last one, we know how much current flows here. We know what the voltage difference is between two and four. Or do we? Do we know what the voltage difference is between two and four? Between nodes two and four? Do we know what the nodal voltage is at two? I have it written on the table. I like asking questions and then giving you the exact opposite answer. Do we know what four is? Yes, see, there you go. Nice. Actually, the answer was no. Get out. <laughs> no. Um, no, you're right, though. We do. We have it written on the board. We calculated it. We solved for it right here. We solved for two right here. 
We know what 2 and 4 are. We know what the voltage difference is between these two. When we go back to this system, we know what the voltage difference is between these two. It's 15 minus 9. We could also solve for the same one by plugging in, because uh, we know 13.5 microcoulombs of charge go into CEQ2. So if we just plug in the value uh, to this equation of CEQ2, which is 2.25 microfarads, and then plug in the 13.5 microcoulombs, we'll get six. So you can solve it that way. Uh, you get six that goes across here, or you can solve it as six because you know that's the difference between two and four. Okay, so we know there's six volts across here. Six volts across here means we have six volts across CEQ1. Okay, six volts across CEQ1 means our, trying to find board space I haven't used yet. Where's that virgin board space? Q, CEQ1 is equal to CEQ1 times VCEQ1. Okay, we know what this is. We know what this is. We can solve for how much charge. This is on YouTube, so you can watch the end of it. See you later. Um, sorry, I'm going a little bit long today. I'm going as fast as I can. I uh, spent too much time talking about thermodynamo. Um, well, I can just plug this into my calculator and solve for how much charge goes down this branch of the circuit. Okay, so now I've got CEQ1, which is 0.75. If you need to go, go ahead. Doesn't hurt my feelings. I don't have feelings, I'm a robot. This is equal to Q, CEQ1 is equal to 4.5 times 10 to the negative sixth coulombs or 4.5 microcoulombs, okay? So now that I know that, 4.5 microcoulombs, I can go back here and I can say, I know that there are 4.5 microcoulombs traveling down this branch of the circuit, which means I have 4.5 microcoulombs at C2 which means I just use the same equation again, QC2 equals C2 times VC2. I know what this is, I know what that is, I solve for the voltage. So VC2 is equal to QC2 over C2. This is 4.5 microcoulombs. This is 1.5 microfarad. 4.5 divided by 1.5 means that VC2 is equal to three volts, okay? So, there are three volts across this capacitor, which means there are three volts between nodes two and three. Quick head mass, if we go halfway between these two, it's, it's 12. That's it, there's our node voltages, okay. I don't expect you to do a problem like this on the quiz, but you should know how to do this, okay? It's equivalence, it's just stepping through the circuit, it's doing the same thing we did with equivalent resistances. Except for this time we're focusing on charge, we have a little bit different of an equation, but it's the same method, stepping through the system. Okay, you have a quiz. I'm gonna push back your reading assignment for a week. We'll do, the, we'll do your next reading assignment the week after, so if you've already started on that, keep it on hold. I'll make it due a week later because we're not gonna get into chapter four stuff next week. Um, we're gonna heavily cover inductors on Tuesday. Bring your Raspberry Pis on Thursday, okay? All right, have a good weekend. Feel free to email me if you have questions. Do the quiz. Do the homework problems. I'll see you next week.